Hi, as a site leader, I manage risk daily. It's an essential part of the job, no matter what role you play. There are a mind-boggling number of things that could go wrong on site. Things that nobody wants to happen. Equipment failing, people not coming to work, natural disasters, and then the worst possible scenario, injury or loss of life. You know, unwanted events. The ones that keep us awake at night. And it's because, honestly, when we deal with risk reactively or in isolation, it gets the upper hand. We respond to unwanted events when they happen, instead of anticipating them. We spend our time putting out fires. We've become quite good at it. But it has its costs. On human life. On productivity. On peace of mind. We need to take control of risk. We need a way of prioritizing, thinking ahead, so we can see what is likely to get in the way of us delivering what we need to achieve, our objectives. A structured way of looking at risk, preventing unwanted events, and minimizing the consequences if they do happen. The good news is we now have a way of doing that, operational risk management. It is the piece of GTS2 on integrated risk management that we do at site level. Look, it's not entirely new. Operational risk management complements other risk activities and builds on the safety, health and environment risk management work we've been doing over the last few years. Operational risk management is a framework for thinking through your situation. When you use operational risk management correctly, you develop different habits. You ask yourself the kinds of questions that help you make the best decisions. You apply it to all site activities. Instead of managing each individual risk in isolation, operational risk management makes sure we do it from every possible angle, from HR, legal and safety, to engineering and maintenance. Remember the four layers of the operational risk management process? They were introduced during the A3 and A2 training. Operational risk management is not just for those directly involved, but also those whose decisions influence them from the general manager down to the operator level and back again. The aim? To make sure the most effective risk controls are identified and exercised by the right people at each level. So what does that mean in practice? First, the site management team goes through the steps of baseline risk management, layer one. When that's done, we have a clear view of our most significant site risks, our priority unwanted events. Now, this is important because it means that we can prioritize the risks most urgent for us to tackle. So hundreds of risks that could cause harm or stop production are narrowed down to a manageable number based on their significance. Prioritized. We can now focus effort and resources where they will make the biggest difference. You then add the priority unwanted events to the site's risk and critical control register which is used to indicate that priority risks are under control because now the site leadership team can action, review and monitor the critical controls linked to the significant risks. Working smart, eh? To manage those significant risks effectively, you apply issue-based risk management, layer 2. You break down each so that you really understand every cause and consequence. Then you design or identify controls for each one. You use bow tie analysis to organize the required controls that need to be put in place. Now you've got your controls in view, in particular the critical controls, what do you do with them? You update the site's risk and critical control register to make sure it reflects the critical controls that need to be in place to address the priority unwanted events. For layer three, task risk management, we use job risk analysis. What's so special about layer three? It allows you to manage the risks associated with particular task actions or activities. Use information from layer one to prioritize which tasks to focus on and the controls from layer two to help define the particular controls to be implemented. You need to pay attention to layer two and three and how they work together because this is often where implementation breaks down and the information from layer 1 and 2 is not carried down into layer 3. Watch it. So the end result is that the whole team has a robust and effective standard operating procedure for all routine tasks and a risk-based process to handle non-routine work. The team also has a very clear understanding of the right controls that are needed at the right time to do that task safely. Covered. Finally, we come to layer 4. 
Continuous Risk Management. Frontline teams conduct SLAM. Stop, look, assess and manage. Now, you as the site leader can make sure of three things. One, that the hazards where people are working are identified and understood. Two, that people understand the controls that manage those risks. And three, that those controls are being executed correctly. Everyone's safe and productive. Operational risk management is dynamic. Information is continually updated as situations change and we learn from incidents. Knowledge is power. What I didn't fully appreciate until now is how each layer links directly to the others. Like, for example, if a risk assessment doesn't build on the previous one, or worse, sits on a shelf, then we drop the ball. Even if we've designed the right controls, if we don't execute them properly and continually update our knowledge of the situation, we'll be powerless to prevent the unwanted event. Operational risk management is about helping your whole team, from operator to manager, get to the top of their game, if you know what I mean. If you implement ORM correctly, the actions, controls and improvements that are identified in this process flow directly into the relevant parts of the site's management system, making it a central part of how we operate on site. To sum up, operational risk management enables business excellence through three things improved risk identification and control, better prioritization and resource allocation, enhanced operational decision-making and performance. Operational risk management helps us take control of risk, not the other way around. Add it up. Safer working conditions plus more productivity plus better business equals a good night's sleep for all site managers. Simple, isn't it? Routine. Now we can all sleep better at night. Worry-free.